Do you have old time music jam social anxiety? You know what I'm talking about. That moment when they ask you to start the tune and you're put on the spot. Maybe you try to start it with a nice count off. One, two, one, two, three, four. Or perhaps you prefer more of the jump right in technique. <laughs> Well, today, we're going to be talking about a little thing called taters. It's tater time! Hey everybody, we are talking about starting a fiddle tune using taters today. Now, uh, there are many ways that you could start a tune. You certainly could start it just by beginning to play and people would jump in. Um, or you could give a count, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, if you're doing a waltz, etc. But uh, typically, one of the most uh, polite or courteous ways to start a fiddle tune, a quick reel maybe, um, in a jam, if you're a fiddle player, maybe if you're another instrument too, but especially for fiddle players, is to play taters. Tater is a sort of our version of the drummer's count off at the beginning of a tune. We're setting the speed for the tune with these taters. So you'd never want to play really fast taters and then a really slow. That's misleading. You always are setting the tempo for the entire tune with that beginning of your taters. One, two, three, four, tune. So to do that, uh, we I like to use shuffle bowing for taters. You can do long, short, short. That's one, one beat, one shuffle. And four of them together sets the speed for a tune. So I could do one, there's times when doing that rhythm can be confusing with the beginning of a tune. So for example, uh, let's take the tune Barlow Knife. I play it in the key of A. If I'm doing taters and I'm starting with a four count, and let's say I want to do it with just one note. So I'm using my A note, my third finger on the E string, and I do my taters. And then I'm ready to start the tune. But I've just started it on the exact same note that I used as my taters, and the starting note is also a shuffle. So because of that, it can be confusing sometimes uh, when listening for, for your other jamming friends there to hear exactly when do the taters end and when does the tune begin. And that's really the whole reason we're doing taters, so they know when the tune begins and what the speed is so that they can start. So if you're playing uh, taters and you're playing a single note and it's the exact same note as the starting note of your tune and they're both shuffle bowing, you might want to look for um, a way around that. What I like to do in that case is I do one shuffle, two shuffle, three shuffle, four, not shuffle. I just either, you can either play that four as a slightly longer bow or do four and then a slight pause. That's going to give a little pause to the ear and it's going to indicate to all of your other jammers, this is where you're going to come in, right here. Something like that would sound like. It's almost like taking a breath before singing out. You know that when that breath is coming, music is about to come right after it. And so that's sort of that pause for da 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 and so on. So that's all about our rhythm side on starting a tune with taters. Let's talk about what's happening with our left hand though. Now, when thinking about your left hand, what note am I gonna play to start this tune? What note can I play for a tater? You have to have, first of all, some idea about what key you're in. And then when you have an idea of what key you're in, 
you're going to make a chord that coordinates with the root, root chord or the main chord of that key. So for example, uh, let's keep working with, with Barlow Knife for this. Barlow Knife, I played in the key of A, and I need to know how to make an A chord. Now, I will say there is not the A chord, and you learn it, and that's the only A chord. Um, what you need to learn is what makes up an A chord, and then you can find many different uh, places to play an A chord on your fingerboard. So, first of all, how do you make a chord? You make a chord by first understanding that the alphabet, in the musical alphabet, is a circle. It goes to G, and then it goes back to A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, and it continues. The next thing you need to do is be able to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. If you can do those two things, you can make a chord. So if we start with the key of A, whatever key you're in, that letter, A, this time, is going to be one. It's going to be your starting note, your main note, your root note, one. So A is one. That makes B two, C, in this case, C sharp, three, D is four, and E is five. So each number is just the next step in the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, or one, two, three, four, five. If you want to make a chord, an, a major chord, then you take one, the root, three, and five. So in that case, one, we know that was A. So we have A, B, C is our three, D, E is our five. Remember I said that that C is a C sharp in the key of A. So we have A, C sharp, and E. Those three notes, when you put them together, create an A chord. They're called the major triad, if you want to know the term for that. That's the major triad, these three notes that are needed to make an A chord. Now, we're fiddle players. Try and play three notes at exactly the same moment on your fiddle. You can't do it. You can play pretty close. You can hit one and then strike the other two almost immediately, but you're not going to be able to play three notes all together at the same moment on a fiddle. The strings are just not lined up in such a way that that's possible. So a fiddler's chord is going to take just two of those three notes and that would create our version of that chord. Now you can use any of those two notes or any of those three notes. So you have A, C sharp and E. So you could play an A and a C sharp together, or an A and an E together, or a C sharp and an E together. You can put them in any kind of order you want, and you can have one is lower and higher and then switch them. Any way that you can fit two of those three notes together creates an A chord. So you can also, when doing taters, just play the root note. So if I wanted to play just the root note in the key of A, that's A. And so I would play, or maybe I'd play the A that's over here on the E string, that third finger. Or there's another A, there's one over here on the G string, that first finger is also an A. So I could use any of those just as a single note by playing the root, and that would start uh, that would be a perfectly fine start for taters. If you want to add a second note in though, you're going to uh, put your bow so that it's covering two strings and you're going to play two of those three notes. So let's start off with an A and an E. Remember that was one and five and that sounds like this. That's my open A and my open E. Or I could do two A notes together, open A on the A string and A, my third finger on the E string. Or maybe I want to throw in a C sharp. So I have that third finger on my E string. I'm also going to drop C sharp, which is my second finger on the A string. Or maybe 
maybe I throw out A altogether and I just play three and five, which was C sharp and E. Still a version of an A chord. So you can take any, any conglomeration of those three notes and make it into an A chord. And then you play your shuffle bow and you've got taters. Now, when deciding uh, where to put these, or where to put your chord, listen to how your tune begins. You know, you wanna put it somewhere in a, a nearby range, nearby register to your beginning notes. So if I'm playing Barlow Knife up here on the E string and I have my starting note as this A, I probably would not want to play an A chord that's way down there on the G and D string. It's still an A chord, it could technically work, but it's going to make more work for yourself than having to jump towards the melody uh, to begin. So choose a chord, a set of those two notes that's nearby to your melody. If you're over starting on the E and A string, most likely you'd want a chord that is starting on, on the E and A string. And if you're on the D and G, something that's in that range. Now, uh, you're going to use that same principle no matter what key you go to. So we did A, that was easy. Uh, if we take a look at the key of D, we have to remember now, one is no longer going to be A. One is now going to be D. That will be our starting point. So D becomes one, E becomes two, F sharp beca becomes three, uh, G becomes four, and then we're not gonna go to the letter H. Remember, our musical alphabet is a circle. Once you get to G, you go back to A. So that means A is five. D, E, F sharp, G, A. One, two, three, four, five. So that means one is D, F sharp is three, A is five. One, three, and five, you've got your D chord. Find those notes on your fingerboard. You remember you can, in this case, again, you do have an open string. You could always just play that open D, uh, or you could put one and five together. Five was the A, so you could do D and A together. Or throw in an F sharp. And then we also have the other uh, most common uh, key that we come across in old time jams is the key of G. So let's do the same thing. Remember the root, which is G, is always going to be one. So G is one. Musical alphabet's a circle. We're not going to H. We're going to go to A. So G, A is two. B is three. Uh, C is four. And D is five. A, C, Oh, sorry, A, B, D, one, three, five. And then you have your notes for your G chord. Use a G, use a G and a B, use a B and a D, use a G and a D, use a B and a G. Put them together any way you'd like and you can make your taters. So that's, that's a little bit about taters. Hopefully that will help you out uh, next time you find yourself in a jam and you're asked to start a tune. Just whip out those taters and start it off. See you next time.